Democratic Congresswoman Val Demings. She is a member of the Congressional Black Caucus. Uh, Representative, thank you so much for being with us. So we're getting this spin that the White House and these Republican senators who back the president's side are basing it on the fact that he said, and I'm going to say the words hopefully for one last time, shit house countries, not shit whole countries. Does that distinction matter to you? Hi, John. Uh, first of all, let me say this. When the president of the United States has to repeatedly say, because of his words or his actions, that he's not a racist, we have a definite problem. I think the fact that we are talking about this during Martin Luther King's uh, birthday uh, is just a painful reminder that racism is still the ghost in the room and it has found its way to the White House. It's almost insulting, it's definitely disturbing and disappointing that the other two Republican senators in the room would suggest that there is a difference between whole and house. And I, I just think that is ridiculous and uh, they really should be ashamed of themselves. Well, well, look, if that's what they're basing their claims on, are they simply lying about the substance of the meeting? I think they're trying to use a technicality as an excuse. For the people who come from Haiti or African nations or other immigrants who believe in the American dream and are trying their best to make America their home, whether you say whole or house, it is insulting, it is degrading, it is divisive, and the president owes them an apology. And if the other Republican senators in that room are going to use that as an excuse, a technicality that he did not, um, disparage those nations, they owe them an apology as well. So the niece uh, uh, of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. was on Fox News today, and she was defending what the president said. This is Alveda King. People were saying that President Trump has called Haiti and Africa a bad word. Mm -hmm. Well, no, he was referring to the corruption in those countries that needs to be fixed, where they actually are hell holes over there because of the stranglehold of corruption. What's your response to that? You know, John, everybody is entitled to their opinion. Uh, I worked in law enforcement for 27 years. I have spent uh, quite a bit of time uh, providing security, for example, for uh, white supremacist group who were demonstrating uh, in Orlando. And it is clear to me, and having to, you know, listen to the things that they have said during those demonstrations, it's pretty clear to me what the president meant. I did not hear him talk about corruption or other report from the senators who were in the room. They didn't put it in that context that he was talking about corruption or crime or the problems in the area. That, but he referred to those nations in that disparaging way. So even before you were a member of Congress and even before this latest round of statements, you said that you believe that then Donald Trump, now President Trump, is a racist. So the question is, how do you then deal with such a person? What is your advice to your leaders uh, in Congress right now who are trying to hammer out a deal on Dreamers, trying to hammer out a budget agreement? How do you want to see them approaching this man that you've called a racist? Well, let me say this. Um, as I indicated earlier, I worked at the police department for 27 years, served as a police chief. And let's put this in the context of if a police officer had used those remarks to refer to people from other nations, he or she would have been fired. And so they would have been fired because if there were a racist or they had the appearance of being a racist. Perception is reality. Both are a problem. But with that being said, here we are in about, in less than a week, um, we need to, we certainly do not want to shut the government down. We have 800,000 children out there who are dependent on us to come up with legislation that protects them. I believe they are a priority. I believe we have uh, the obligation to continue to work for a deal to protect those 800,000 uh, children uh, who are dependent on us. You and so I am hopeful that the president and my colleagues on the other side of the aisle will come up with meaningful, le meaningful legislation that will protect um, the DACA you kids. You said don't want to shut the government down, but are you willing to shut the government down if 
the president doesn't sign on to some deal on Dreamers before we're talking about Saturday or Friday night at midnight? Well, John, what I will tell you, I'm not going to telegraph what I will do here on your show, but what I will tell you is this. DACA is a priority. Those children are here through no fault of their own. They were promised that they could stay here through the previous administration, or rather previous mm -hmm. administration. I believe that this president has an obligation to not punish them and drag them through the political games that are currently being played, unfortunately, out of this administration one thing, and uh, my colleagues on the other side of the aisle. One thing that I don't think should be lost in the back and forth here was the deal that was brought to the president that presumably, you know, Dick Durbin, the Democratic senator from Illinois, had signed on to, and presumably some Democratic member of the House, included funding, some funding, limited funding, for something that could be construed as a border fence or a border wall. Is that something that you could vote for? If it included protection for dreamers, could you vote yes on a bill that gave money to one of, you know, to President Trump's border wall? As I said, I do believe that the dreamers have to be a priority. Look, I also believe that, yes? that our national, that yes? our national, let me say this, our national security is critical. And I believe even the White House has said that he's talked about, he talked about the wall during the campaign, but he also talked about fencing. He talked about technology. I have no issue with enhancing our border security. Our national security is important, but we will not do that at the expense of the dreamers. Uh, we're just learning, I think, that some of your colleagues are going to boycott uh, the State of the Union address. Do you see yourself going to listen to the president later this month? You know, it's very possible because we have uh, quite a few more days to go. And while I am currently planning on attending, I have invited uh, someone who was involved uh, in the Pulse nightclub shooting. Mm. Um, they are certainly excited about being there and having that experience. But between now and the time of the State of the Union, who knows what the president might do or say. And so we have to play that one uh, day by day. All right, Representative Val Demings, thank you so much for being with us tonight.